Okay, so thank you very much. And thank you, Professor Hilman, for the organization of this uh, uh, conference and for the possibility of being here in Berlin. So today uh, I will talk about ancient Greek historians in the digital age with a focus on fragmentary historians uh, showing methods for uh, extracting and annotating information about them in the context of their preservation. And first, uh, by ancient Greek historians, I refer here to the vast group of prose authors writing in ancient Greek and mainly addressing uh, inquiries about the past. This is a generic definition, but uh, uh, in this regard, I refer to the um, original use of the ancient Greek word historia. So I, I don't want to get into the complexity of defining historiography and ancient hi Greek historiography, but we can refer to the original use of this uh, ancient Greek word, uh, considering also the beginning of the histories of Herodotus, where Herodotus um, informs his listeners and readers about his intention to present the results of his investigation of past events, historias apodexis. But now within uh, uh, the big domain of ancient Greek historiography and uh, ancient Greek historians, scholars have identified and labeled a group of authors, the so-called fragmentary historians. And the question is, what do we mean by that? And uh, uh, in general, what do we mean by fragmentary authors and texts? Because uh, these adjective and in general, these literary phenomenon can be applied to other genres like oratory, philosophy, tragedy, comedy, etc. And uh, um, in this case, in order to identify these authors, we have to consider the textual heritage that has been uh, transmitted to us from the past. And in this uh, classical heritage, I refer here by classical to ancient Greek and Latin, um, we find in this heritage many bibliographic references to lost authors and works. And uh, for example, in this case, uh, if uh, we consult a page of uh, ancient Greek literature, in this case, I have an example from the Deipnosophis of Athenaeus of Naucratis, uh, we can, for example, isolate a passage where we find the reference to a lost historian. In this case, the name is Philochorus. We find a reference to his lost work, uh, the history of Attica, the seven book of the history of Attica, the Attis, and then the citation of uh, a passage of his lost work in the form of a paraphrase in this case. Now, we don't read the Greek text, but uh, in terms of method, usually a passage like this is extracted and labeled as a fragment belonging to a fragmentary historian. In this case, the name is Philochorus. And in a traditional print environment, a passage like this, a chunk of text like this, is reprinted in a collection with other fragments coming from other extant uh, sources in um, uh, referring to the same author. In this case, the, the author, the historian, the lost historian is Philochorus. And usually this uh, chunk of text is put in a sequence, uh, is assigned a number. And of course the sequence, the order depends on the decisions of the editor um, according to uh, critical, philological, historiographical uh, reflections and analysis. And of course we can have different editions where the same fragment is assigned a different number. Now this practice um, in philology, in historiography has been and still is fundamental because of course in this way we have been able and we are still able to rediscover lost authors and to try to reconstruct the contribution of these authors to historiography, but not only, also to other genres, and also to reconstruct their intellectual activity. Of course, the problem of this kind of uh, um, practice, strongly depending on the medium, the book, uh, has uh, drawbacks, because in this case, of course, we completely decontextualize these uh, passage um, from the original context where the passage is preserved and the, we create these fragments which are not 
portions of the original text because the original text is lost. What we have is only the citing text, the citing author. Uh, and also within these texts, uh, these uh, short texts, we have different elements like bibliographic information about the author, about his lost work and other elements. And usually these elements are um, hidden behind uh, these uh, labels like fragmenta, frustula, reliquia, etc. Um, so this is, uh, these are some of the problems of uh, working with fragmentary authors in this sense. Uh, but now we have two questions here. So why do we look for fragmentary authors in general and within this big group of historians? And how can we represent these authors and bibliographic information about them in a digital environment? Uh, for the first uh, uh, question, uh, we have uh, an answer in numbers, let's say, because uh, if we consider uh, the corpus uh, of ancient Greek literature in general, today we can say that about 50% uh, of what we have is uh, transmitted in the form of fragmentary text. Of course, I was able to get this percentage considering what we have now, not what was written in the past, and this is the the, the well-known problem of the shipwreck of ancient literature. And also this kind of percentage was drawn uh, thanks to modern editions because we have a certain amount of still extant sources. And thanks to this work of looking for traces of lost authors, we are able to get percentages like this, but we strongly depend on modern editions, modern print editions. So I'm very well aware of the, uh, the limits of these percentages. But still, then within the group, big group of fragmentary authors, uh, we see that most of them are completely lost because we also have examples of authors whose works are partially preserved. For example, for tragic playwrights or comic playwrights in ancient Greek literature, some of their tragedies or comedies are preserved, other not. But most of them are completely lost. And then finally, given that these uh, context is about history, digital history, and we talk about historians, we see that in the big group of fragmentary authors for ancient Greek literature, uh, historians cover a good percentage, about 24.5%. Again, the, I was able to get this percentage considering our classifications of ancient authors. Today, we can identify a big group of authors as historians. And today in digital libraries, we have corpora of ancient Greek literature with metadata. And so we can identify this group, but there are many limits, I have to say, because within the group of historians, we can find many subgenres, and definitely there are many limits to apply modern categories to ancient authors, because there are many authors who can be labeled as historians, but they overlap with other uh, genres. But anyway, so this is where we are now. So if we want to defend uh, projects for working on fragmentary literature, definitely we have good uh, arguments. But the second, uh, but this is uh, what we have uh, now uh, today. And uh, then how can we represent these uh, fragments in a digital environment and information about these uh, authors? Of course, uh, um, a possibility we have, uh, the, the first thing I have to say is that we can uh, um, preserve the traditional print model. A traditional is a, a neutral adjective in this case, in the sense that also in a digital environment, we can collect these chunks of text preserving information about lost authors and works. Like in this case where I have a project, I have produced a project, the Digital Fragment Historicorum Graecorum, which is basically a textual database of uh, lost authors and works, historians. In this case, we find the fragment that I was showing before. Of course, in a digital environment, uh, to summarize, we can have uh, extended features. For example, here we can uh, analyze, we can produce the linguistic analysis of each fragment for different purposes, not only for analyzing the language of those authors and of their witnesses, but also for other um, purposes in NLP for historical languages. And a project like this um, has also connections with other 
collections of fragmentary authors, metadata from library systems, etc. And in this project, there are also other things like charts, maps, text reuse detection experiments, etc. But uh, in order to fully take advantage of digital technologies, how can we uh, develop a new board digital model for lost historians? But in general, I would like to uh, put historians in a bigger uh, frame of ancient authors. And in this case, definitely, um, we can um, take this advantage because in a digital environment, as we know, we can work within the context of our extant sources. Um, and if we go back to uh, the example of our textual heritage, for example, in um, in, a, in a page like this, um, we, instead of isolating entire passages preserving information about lost authors, we can individuate elements of information about authors and works. So we preserve the context and we individuate single linguistic elements. These are mainly constituted by names of authors, not only lost authors, because in the same context, we can find uh, historians and other authors, still ex references to still extant authors or to lost authors. And then we have, let's say, titles of ancient works or descriptions of their content, because titles for ancient literature, uh, title is a difficult concept in the sense that we have titles in the ancient world, but uh, they are more flexible than today. We can have different titles for the same work. We can have descriptions of the content. But these elements, uh, they provide bibliographic data and they are also signals of the presence of text reuses because usually these elements, when we have a reference to the author and his work, these elements introduce the actual reuse, the text reuse. And here we can borrow this uh, expression from the digital humanities. And in this project, I'm not working on that part. I'm also not working on uh, uh, stylometry, on identifying genres of authors, but on exploring the language of ancient or, or sources to refer to these bibliographic resources. Um, and today is possible to do that because uh, we have different methods in terms of uh, linguistic analysis and annotation. And the problem is that for ancient Greek, we still have a lack of data, even if we already have linguistic annotations, especially for these categories, proper names. Within we find names of authors and let's say titles of ancient works. But in this case, I have been experimenting and I'm doing name entity recognition and annotation because uh, uh, we can use this uh, uh, technique for, uh, in the, for trying, for beginning to structure our uh, corpus of ancient Greek literature and individuate these explicit elements, as I say. Of course, in, the con in a context like this, we can find other elements like verba di kendi, introducing, of course, uh, the citation, the actual text reuse, or uh, also other uh, elements uh, concerning also genres. But uh, so far, considering the situation, so this is really practice uh, of digital philology, we begin to create data because we don't have them, uh, this data. And uh, name entity recognition is a, a, a method which is working so far. So basically starting with basic methods, of course, we can tokenize our text, we can individuate inflected forms because as you know, ancient Greek is an inflected language and we can lemmatize uh, um, these forms. So for example, in this case, I have a, a screenshot from a resource which is available online where we have inflected forms corresponding to proper names in ancient Greek and their uh, the lemmatization of these forms. Because of course, through lemmata, we can uh, experiment, uh, we, we can experiment with uh, a first level of disambiguation of these uh, proper names. Today, we have authority lists, for example, for personal names in ancient Greek, for uh, uh, geographical places in gazetteers. But the problem is, this, is that these resources, and I have um, a selection with icons on the right of this slide, the limit is that in this case, uh, most data is in Latin or in contemporary languages, modern languages, not in ancient Greek. Um, but we can begin to use a method, and I have done that for a first disambiguation between uh, personal names and place names. And for example, 
for the first part of the work, uh, focus on the deepness of his of Athenaeus um, of Naucratis, we can in begin to individuate uh, generic name entity classes like uh, personal names, uh, uh, locations, organizations, and derivatives. Within, of course, these classes, if we go into the text, we can individuate many other subclasses. But I think that for the for first results, it's important to work at the first level, let's say these generic name entity classes. Uh, and for example, in terms of uh, um, experiments I have done, uh, considering that we also have problems of uh, automatic lemmatization, uh, even if we have lemmatizers today for ancient Greek, for example, for personal names, we can uh, individuate a good percentage. For geographical places, the situation is a bit different, not to speak of ambiguities. There are names in ancient Greek that can be both a personal name and geographical places. And in fact, in order to move to a second level of disambiguation, we definitely have to go back to the context. And here we have various, various possibilities. Here I'm showing screenshots of tools available online. Of course, there, are, there is data behind. But for example, through concordances like this, this is a dedicated concordance. Today, we can generate quite easily concordances. But this is a dedicated concordance because we can focus on proper names in the context. For example, Elanikos is a personal name in ancient Greek. But then in specific context is also the name of, of an ancient Greek historian. And uh, um, in order to, uh, to work on this aspect, I have been using a, a platform, in this case, Inception, the web-based platform Inception for semantic annotation, where I was able to upload already annotated data, by which I mean tokens, single tokens, with three layers of annotations. Uh, in the first case, the yellow one is the layer of uh, uh, name entities. The green one is the lemma in ancient Greek. And then there is a, a third layer, the purple layer, which is a custom layer. And I call it a catalog, where we can disambiguate those elements in the text uh, that uh, are about bibliographic information, like names of authors in the text, and also uh, titles or descriptions of the content of works. Um, in this case, of course, a resource like this, and there are other resources, allows us to perform then entity relation because, uh, of course, uh, especially for titles, uh, we have to uh, connect a single, token, a single tokens to form a title, and then there are common nouns like prepositions. But this is also valid for names of authors when, when we have not only the a personal name, the main name, but also other onomastic elements like adjectives referring to the place of origin of these authors. And through a resource like this, it's also possible to ingest the data, for example, from, from Wikidata, which was, which was mentioned before, which is a knowledge base very interesting because we have a lot of data for ancient Greek uh, literature in Wikidata, but we need to work also on Wikidata for the structure of those data, and then definitely for, for example, for titles of ancient work. And uh, uh, an output, of, um, a first result is a catalog. This is what is available for the Deipnosophists, but also for other works of ancient Greek literature preserving information about ancient authors. And in this case, uh, the catalog is a catalog based on linguistic annotations of what we find in ancient sources. Of course, in this case, you can still see metadata in uh, uh, modern languages, in Latin or in modern languages. Uh, but the, the, the real uh, interesting part is the linguistic annotation of these elements in the context. For example, in this case, I have the example of the ancient Greek historian Hellanicus, um, where, oops, sorry. I didn't want to do that. Okay, where we can find, um, in this case, a list of his lost works. The interesting thing in this case, you can see identifiers for each work. These identifiers are assigned according to a protocol developed in digital classics. I don't, uh, I, I don't have the time to focus on this, but definitely there is the possibility to annotate 
the form in the text and assign specific identifiers. And then we also have Wikidata IDs for these works. But is the language interesting? And analyzing this language, we can see how we can be go beyond certain categories, like for example, historian, historicus. Hellanicus definitely he's an author who is more than a historian because he, wore, he composed the works on chronologies, on mythology, etc. So um, this is uh, the kind of uh, possibility that we have today. So the perspective is the context, the citing context and the language, this linguistic uh, uh, annotation of this language. And now to conclude, why this kind of work? Well, first of all, because uh, as I said at the beginning, we have a lack of ancient Greek data in indices, catalogs, other philological resources, both in print and in a digital format, because many, resource, many digital resources still depend on the digitization of print resources. And we need more data in ancient Greek. The contextual language, the rich language of bibliographic information the ancient Greek language is usually hidden behind labels like fragmenta, frustula, excerpta, reliqu, etc. for the case of fragmentary authors. Then definitely analyzing this language, we can rethink uh, modern genres, literary genres applied to ancient historians. And then there is this framework we have to put our work. So we can benefit from technologies of NLP applied to historical languages, but we can also contribute to NLP for historical languages, producing more, more data, which is definitely necessary today, and also by providing complex examples like the language for referring to um, ancient authors and works in our uh, literature. So I, uh, uh, for self-promoting, you can find more information about uh, these uh, projects and other connected projects in my publications. And I thank you very much for your patience and uh, for the discussion.